On Five News, the UKIP bust up, which left its leadership favourite in hospital. Stephen Wolfe collapsed after he was allegedly punched by another MEP at the European Parliament. Also, evacuate now. As Hurricane Matthew threatens a direct hit on Florida, two million people are told to leave their homes. The tower block fire started by a tumble dryer. Now fire chiefs demand Whirlpool tell five million customers to stop using their machines. And why Kylie Minogue is taking a stand on gay marriage with her own wedding date. Hello and welcome to Five News. I'm Sean Williams. The man who many predict could be the next leader of UKIP, Stephen Wolfe, is recovering in hospital after reportedly being punched by another member of his own party at a meeting of MEPs at the European Parliament in Strasbourg. After what the interim leader Nigel Farage described as an altercation, Mr Wolfe collapsed and began having fits. He's since released a statement saying he's now fine but is having more tests. Leila Hayes reports. Only yesterday, Stephen Wolfe announced he'd be standing as a UKIP leadership candidate. He's now in a Strasbourg hospital after collapsing inside the European Parliament building. There are reports Mr Wolfe was punched by a fellow MEP outside a party meeting this morning, but that hasn't been confirmed. He's said to have had two epileptic-like fits after collapsing, but this afternoon he issued a statement from the hospital saying... The CT scan has shown that there is no blood clot in the brain. At the moment, I am feeling brighter, happier and smiling as ever. As a precaution, I am being kept in overnight, awaiting secondary tests to make sure everything is fine. It is yet more turmoil for UKIP. On Tuesday, Diane James resigned as leader of the party after only 18 days in the job. Today, she tweeted, My thoughts are with Stephen Wolfe and his wife and daughter at this anxious time. And I wish Stephen a speedy and full recovery. Fellow MEP Paul Nuttall said he was shocked when he heard what happened. I hope that Stephen uh, makes a full and speedy recovery and our thoughts are with him and his family at this difficult moment. Stephen Wolfe is a prominent UKIP figure and thought to be the party's best hope for leader. The current interim leader, Nigel Farage, said today he deeply regrets the altercation that took place, resulting in Mr Wolfe being taken to hospital. Stephen Wolfe is now said to be sitting up in his hospital bed and recovering well. But there are questions about exactly what happened to him and who may be responsible. So, Leila, what more do we know about what happened? Well, Sean, details, as you can imagine, are sketchy. Uh, but the reports from Strasbourg suggest that there was a heated row in this meeting uh, of MEPs from UKIP this morning. And uh, that basically what happened was uh, Stephen Wolfe went outside the meeting uh, with a fellow MP where punches were exchanged. Now, of course, none of these reports can be verified yet, but... Uh, one of the reports is saying that uh, the row was about um, Stephen Wolfe's apparent uh, support for the Conservative Party and the possibility that he may have been defecting. Now, two hours after this altercation, he, of course, collapsed. Uh, we have just moments ago had a further statement from Nigel Farage. In it, he says he has now launched an inquiry into the altercation uh, that left the MEP in hospital, uh, and he will not name the other man involved. He's also said that this incident involved two grown-up men, it was not seemly behaviour, and it makes UKIP look violent. Well, the details of this incident may not be clear, but what is clear is this is not a good day for UKIP. No, Leila, thank you. At least two million people in Florida have been warned to flee their homes as Hurricane Matthew heads straight out the American state. The storm, with winds of well over 100 miles an hour, has already caused major devastation across parts of the Caribbean. Well, Florida's governor told residents today, get out, this storm will kill you. Julian Drucker reports. On its path of destruction, this is Hurricane Matthew. It is battering the Bahamas after taking scores of lives in the last few days. This is what winds of 125 miles an hour look like. So in Florida and across the southeast coast, they are fearing and preparing for the very worst. 
Nearly two million people have been urged to leave their homes. One of America's biggest ever evacuations. Here in Fort Lauderdale, hundreds are packing themselves into this local shelter. Others have chosen not to heed the advice, instead stocking up on last minute reinforcements. Some of those choosing to stay received this warning from Florida's mayor. If you're watching and you live in an evacuation zone, you need to leave now and get to a safe zone. If you're watching and you're in an evacuation area, get out. Don't take a chance. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Fox News extreme weather alert. Hurricane Matthew moving closer to the United States. Good morning, breaking news. Hurricane Matthew powering up. Now As America watches and waits, the very latest information shows Matthew will strike Florida in the coming hours. It could be the first Category 4 storm in the U.S. since Charlie 12 years ago. And once past Florida, Georgia and South and North Carolina could be hit next. But it is Haiti which has suffered the most from Matthew. Along with the devastation, thousands have been left displaced. The storm has even forced the presidential election to be postponed. Homes and schools have been left obliterated. The United Nations says at least 350,000 people need immediate help. So as America prepares itself in this part of the world, the worst has already happened. Julian Drucker, Five News. The eastern part of Aleppo in Syria, home to 275,000 people, could be destroyed in a matter of weeks. That's according to the UN's special envoy to the country. The area, which is held by rebels, has been under intense bombardment by Syrian government forces for a month. Staffan de Mistura said continued airstrikes will kill or injure thousands more civilians. He said if it helped stop the bombing, he'd escort rebels out of the area himself. If you did decide to leave, in dignity and with your weapons to Idlib or anywhere you wanted to go, I personally am ready physically to accompany you. A 15-year-old boy in Sunderland is critically ill after being shot while riding a motorbike. Police say they've arrested a 16-year-old boy and a 39-year-old man on suspicion of causing grievous bodily harm. And nurse Pauline Kafferke, who contracted Ebola while working in Sierra Leone, has been readmitted to hospital in Glasgow. Mrs Kafferke, seen here on the right, is said to be in a stable condition and having routine tests. It's the fourth time she's been treated since returning from Africa in 2014. People who own faulty Whirlpool tumble dryers have been told to stop using them immediately after one was blamed for causing a huge fire in a tower block. The London Fire Brigade has given the warning and it could affect more than five million dryers. Let's get some more information from Simon Vigar, who's with me. What's going on, Simon? Well, it's been rumbling on for a while, this, uh, Sean, but it was brought to head by a tower block fire in Shepherd's Bush in London in August. This is it. It took 120 firefighters to get it under control. Luckily, nobody was seriously hurt, but uh, several families are still in temporary accommodation. Uh, Indesit is the brand. It's owned by Whirlpool, and London Fire Brigade is unequivocal. The tumble dryer started the fire with fluff igniting on the heating element there. And yet there are still no product recalls. Uh, engineers are being uh, sent out, but the advice from the manufacturer is you can use it, but don't leave it unattended. Fire brigades up and down the country are very, very frustrated by that. And the fire brigade I spoke to today said, uh, don't leave it unattended, turn it off, don't use it. We would strongly recommend, and it's very clear advice, if you find out you've got one of these machines that's subject to the safety notice, please unplug it, don't use it, and wait for the engineer to come and carry out the proper repair. For us, the, the possibility of a fire breaking out and the consequences just make it an unacceptable risk. That's the fire brigade. What about the company? What are they saying? Whirlpool owns uh, three brands involved here. It's Indesit, Hotpoint and uh, Creda. This is what they've said today. Whirlpool's independent forensic investigations are still ongoing and in the circumstances it would be inappropriate to comment further. The safety of consumers is our number one priority. 
We continue to cooperate fully with the relevant regulatory authority. The government's calling for more uh, action from the uh, industry. Uh, the company says, well, if you think it's one of yours, then you can call out the engineer. But the advice from the fire brigade is simply don't use it. You can find out which of those uh, machines are involved on our Facebook page. As I say, it's Hotpoint, Creda and Indesit. Simon, thanks very much for that. Still to come on the programme. As fracking gets the go-ahead in Lancashire, could it now be coming to a site near you? And the smartphone generation, but are children getting more messages than sleep at night? When I wake up, I probably have a thousand messages. You wake up with a thousand messages. All that and more after the break. Hello and welcome back. You're watching Five News. Local residents opposed it. Environmentalists protested against it. The council rejected it. Today, though, the government gave the go-ahead to fracking at a site near Blackpool in Lancashire. The landmark ruling could have implications across the country. Ministers say it'll be great for jobs and for our energy needs. Frankie McCamley reports. It's caused anger in locations across England and is one of the most controversial environmental issues in the country. But today, a landmark decision has been made by the government to ignore a council's decision to turn down an application for fracking, giving it the go-ahead in Western Lancashire. It's the opportunity to start exploring and to potentially unlock a, a tremendous resource for this country to do something about energy security and provide jobs and opportunity for people here in Lancashire and elsewhere. Do you think this is just the start of many more to come? Well, we're very optimistic that this site will be a successful testing uh, site and then we'll be able to see what comes next. This is the first of its kind for a number of reasons. The government has never overturned a council's decision before and the fracking that will take place will incorporate methods that have never been used before in the UK. And this is the site that's been given the go ahead just on the outskirts of Blackpool. It'll be the size of two rugby pitches. Up to four wells will be drilled here, going down 2,000 metres. That's 13 times the size of Blackpool Tower. Hydraulic fracturing or fracking remains highly controversial, with protesters coming out in response to today's announcement. They believe it will damage the economy and pollute the environment. Been through all the democratic processes that are available to us and all the legal processes that are available to us, and the government have totally ignored us. There's huge opposition to this throughout the country and they've completely ignored it. This isn't the end for you, is it? There's more Absol to be done. Absolutely not the end. No, we will continue to fight this. We will find whatever ways we can to stop this. Which campaigners could still do or at least delay this fracking decision by asking for a judicial review? The government, though, claims local communities will benefit first from the plans. However, Labour says if it got into power, it would ban the process. Frankie McCamley, Five News. Parents know how hard it can be tearing children away from their mobile phones, and it seems the habit could be disrupting both their sleeping and their learning. Head teachers are warning that pupils are turning up to school tired and unable to concentrate because they are constantly checking their devices after they've gone to bed. Dominic Reynolds went to a class in East London to hear a few confessions. How many of you have ever used your phone or your tablet after your bedtime? Not a hard question for these Slowly year sevens, up. but the answer might be hard for their parents to hear. Almost all of them are on their smartphones after the lights go out. I think that's everybody but two. Now, if you don't have an 11-year-old in your household, you might not know quite how strongly they feel about their smartphones. If I don't have a phone, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll die. Two of the three I sat down with had stories of using their phone in the middle of the night. So what happens when they get to school? Next day I feel really tired and angry. So then when I get to school I just go to my friends like, please just don't text me in the night because I'll be really grumpy the next day. If we have playtime or lunchtime, I'm not going to play, I'm just going to sit on the floor. <laughs> have you done that before? Um, yeah, just once. Just have a little nap yeah. in break time. And the girl whose phone stays downstairs at bedtime 
When I wake up, I probably have a thousand messages. You wake up with a thousand messages. Well, a new study has found 45% of 11 to 18 year olds routinely use their phone after going to bed. One in 10 checks their phone at least 10 times a night. Most people are on social media, listening to music or watching films. And 25% said they feel tired during the school day as a result of using their phone. For students, this school is a phone-free zone, but deputy head Ian says devices can still disrupt his classes, even when they're not in the classroom. Quite often we can say, you know, what's the issue here? And they say, I just feel tired, sir. Uh, they're not concentrating on the lessons. Um, and obviously that's an uphill struggle for teachers who want to get a good quality education of the students. And we are um, in competition with these phones, which um, provide entertainment 24 hours a day. So what can parents do? Well, the group behind today's research recommends setting and keeping to boundaries around phone use, turning devices off at night, and above all... In the 19 minutes running up to bedtime, that has to be your time to wind down, start to relax, maybe have a bath, read a book. It's not time to be scrolling through and messaging people and worrying about what you've been tagged in. How many have used your phone when you've woken up in the middle of the night? The young people we spoke to said they feared switching off social media chats at night would mean missing out by the morning. Today's warning is that they'll miss out on much more if they can't concentrate in class. Dominic Reynolds, 5 News. The Archbishop of Canterbury said the Pope has been setting a Christ-like example to Christians during a meeting in the Vatican. Justin Welby praised Pope Francis for highlighting the suffering of poor people and for speaking out on climate change. In a joint statement, they said the Anglican and Catholic churches could do much together despite their imperfect union. Health bosses say not enough is being done when it comes to the very cheap cost of alcohol in supermarkets. A report found that beer, wine, cider and spirits are often on sale for pocket money prices, with one high-strength cider costing only 16 pence a unit. Tennis officials are investigating the possibility that a match at Wimbledon this year was fixed. The Tennis Integrity Unit says it's received an alert regarding one match played during the championships because of suspicious betting patterns. It hasn't said which match was involved. And a painting that sold for around £8 million at auction has been declared a forgery. This work, The Unknown Man, had been thought to be by the Dutch artist Franz Hals. Auction House Sotheby says it has reimbursed the buyer in full. Like many couples, Kylie Minogue and her British fiancé Joshua Sass aren't rushing to the altar after getting engaged. For them, though, it's very much a matter of principle. They've insisted the wedding won't happen until her home country, Australia, allows gay people to marry too. Here's Minnie Stevenson. Will it be a long engagement for Kylie and her fiancé, actor Joshua Sass? Well, the couple say unless gay marriage is legalised in Australia, out of solidarity, they refuse to tie the knot. As a protest, they've launched the Say I Do Down Under campaign, which is now being supported by the likes of Dolly Parton. Nice to meet the man who is marrying our Kylie. On you know, Australian we'll TV, Kylie Kylie's British fiancé made their feelings clear. Me and Kylie have talked about it, and we are not comfortable getting married until this law is passed. Oh. Oh. There's, so, so you're definitely not going to Why get... should we get married if... if we will not be getting married until this law is passed in Australia and that is something that we've talked about and decided upon and I wanted to tell you today on, on her behalf and our behalf that until this law is passed in Australia, we will not be getting married. And in June, thousands marched across Australia calling for same-sex couples to be allowed to marry. There will now be a public vote there on gay marriage in February next year. Kylie, who sold over 80 million records worldwide, has long been seen as a gay icon. Today, her friend of more than 20 years, Kathy Lett, told Five News, this is classic Kylie. 
Yeah, this is a very um, b big and important issue to her. It's very close to her heart. And Josh has, has embraced her world so so wholeheartedly that, you know, it's, he's right behind it too. So it's, a, it's, it's so good that they're making this um, a very public issue because it, it might embarrass the politicians in Australia to do something and, and make a change. After agreeing to one day say I do, it now seems the only proposal Kylie will be considering is a yes to gay marriage down under. Minnie Stevenson, 5 News. Well, that's almost it. But before we go, let's have a quick look at what's coming up on 5 News tonight. I'm going to have more on that top story. You Kip leadership hopeful Stephen Wolfe, who is recovering in hospital after collapsing after apparently being punched by a colleague. So tonight we're going to be asking, is the party's leadership falling apart? Also, we'll be talking about the company behind this advert for a PA with a certain bra size. Yes, it's breaking the law, but will anyone stop them from doing it? So all that at 6.30. Hope to see you then. That's it for now. Kirsty McCabe has the weather next. I'll see you at 6.30. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.